How's it going guys? Welcome back to Crafting Cars. Now today's video was actually made possible by our friend Charlie Moore. You guys don't recognize the name. He has helped us out a ton with the Civic in the past. Go to him for all my ceramic coating and powder coating needs. For example, he did the powder coating on our charge piping. He also did the ceramic coating on our PLM turbo manifold. Uh, he did the powder coating on my rear trailing arms and he helped me do the powder coating on Gideon's FC RX-7 subframe. Uh, back in the day too, he also helped me degree the cams on this 400 horsepower B16 engine I got sitting in the Civic right now. And today he's going to be blessing our project car again with this new product I got sitting right here on my bench. So what we are working with here is the latest rendition of the Doryoku Crash Bar. Charlie designed this product using 3D modeling software to ensure a perfect fit on the EK Civic chassis. Today we're going to be walking through the install process on our 97 Honda Civic project car, going over all the benefits and features of this crash bar, and I'll let you know how you can get your hands on one as well. So first things first, let's take off this front bumper and see what we're working with. Uh, my bumper is just held on with the factory style uh, plastic Honda rivets, and then I use the quick release rubber bands on the side, so this shouldn't take long at all. So taking a look at our front end setup here, it's obvious we've made quite a few changes from stock. So we deleted a few things and added a few components as well. So for example, our center radiator support is gone, our lower radiator support is gone and replaced with a traction bar. Uh, the holes on the side here, I capped off with some steel plates just to kind of clean up the look a little bit. We've got a very large radiator and intercooler hanging off the front of the car, as well as a oil cooler hanging off the diagonal side of the car. So yeah, we've changed a lot of things and unfortunately it is impossible to mount up another factory style OEM crash bar. But obviously I'd really like to run a crash bar on the car just for the peace of mind and all the additional benefits that I'll be going over later in the video. And that's exactly where the Doryoku crash bar comes in. So if we can take this and mount it up to our Civic with all the crazy stuff we got going on, I guarantee you, you can make this work with your setup. So let's dive right in and see if we can make this work. Now mounting up this bar is super straightforward, just mounts up to the factory threaded holes in the chassis. So the hole right there and the one right there line up perfectly with these milled out holes on the support plate. Now I've got this little plate welded up in front of my factory hole, but that's all right. I'm just gonna have to drill a little hole in it. I've still got the factory welded nut on the side here. So yeah, once I drill that hole, I'll have access to those threads again. And bolting up this side should be no problem. As far as the other side, I still have access to both of these factory threaded holes. Uh, of course, my oil cooler bracket is using this one. Should just be able to unbolt my oil cooler bracket, uh, bolt up the crash bar, and re-bolt up the bracket. We should still have plenty of clearance. And yeah, I might have to do a little bit of modification to the line and the fittings here just to make it work, but I'm confident we should be able to get it done. So I'm gonna go set up my camera, grab some drill bits for that side, a AN line wrench for that side, and we'll have this crash bar on here before you know it. So. Attaching the crash bar to the chassis itself, we're gonna be using these fasteners right here. These are M8 by 1.25 stainless steel zinc coated bolts. These are provided for free by Charlie when you purchase one of the crash bars. So that works out really well. And to tighten these down, you're gonna want a 13 millimeter socket.
did you look at that? We got it installed and only had to make a few small modifications to my crazy setup here. So before we go ahead and test fit the front bumper, let's go over some of the features and specs of this crash bar. So just by handling this part today, I could definitely tell it's a quality piece. The tubing itself is 13 gauge cold drawn 1020 steel. It's got four mandrel bends and it's one and a half inch diameter. This is gonna give the bar a crazy strength to weight ratio. You would never guess just by looking at it, but this thing only weighs seven and a half pounds, where the factory crash bar weighs about 14 pounds. And this thing is solid. I would not hesitate to mount my intercooler, oil cooler, or even my front splitter to this thing. My favorite part about this bar has gotta be the fact that it actually works with my weird setup here, and it looks good doing it with that match and wrinkle red powder coating. The main reason it works so well with my setup is the fact that it allows for five more forward inches of clearance when compared to the stock bar. Now five inches is a respectable length. What that's gonna do for most of your setups out there is allow for more breathing room around all your auxiliary heat exchangers, which will definitely help keep your car cool on the street and the track. Bumper still fits. All right, guys, well, let's get to that point of the video. I think the outro music's starting already, so I want to give a huge thanks to Charlie for letting me be one of the first customers to try out his V2 crash bar. I'm very hyped with the product. I can't say enough positive things about it. it turned out amazing, and I cannot wait to show it off this season and put it to good use. So, if you want to know how to get a hold of one of these, uh, don't be afraid to hit me or Charlie up on Instagram. I'll go ahead and put our tags right there. Now, as far as color options, if you want to color customize it to your ride, it is a $45 upcharge on the product. So uh, the standard product just comes in satin black, wrinkle black, and satin silver. Of course, I wanted to match my valve cover and charge piping and that red accent color on the car. So I went with the classic Honda wrinkle red. But you can do whatever you like. And yeah, uh, I think that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions, feel free to either hit me or Charlie up or leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you next time. Bye.